Hello and welcome to Share Talk, where today I'm joined by Carl Friel, who's Executive Chairman at Open Orphan. How are you today, Carl? Zach, it's a pleasure to meet you. How are you? I'm very well. Uh, you've been rather busy in recent weeks doing a bit of Christmas shopping. Um, I take it that the Christmas shopping is, uh, is complete now. Yeah, actually, Zach, as we said, we IPO'd in June. We said we'd try and do a very quick scale-up. And we tried to do a deal around the turn of the year. Guess what? We've just done the fastest takeover of one public company of another on AM in seven and a half years. Well, that's uh, obviously speed isn't everything necessarily, but uh, uh, what have you got for your money? Uh, we've got a sleeping giant. Uh, we've acquired HVivo PLC. It's done. HVivo shares are now trading as Open Orphan. HVivo was 170 million market cap less than two years ago. It did almost 15 million revenues last year. It invested 113 million real cash in the last seven years. Quite a bit of it was spent on discovery, but it fundamentally was a lovely services company that lost its way. So we acquired a company for one tenth of invested capital, and we also acquired a company for basically that was 13 million. We issued paper, so we didn't pay any cash for it. And even more interestingly, within that, we feel we've assets about 50 or 60 million. Right, so the, the overall value of the, of the new company on the, on the stock market is around, say, 30 million. About 30 million, correct. Um, what, do you, what do you think um, you've got in your shopping basket uh, for, you know, for, for the deal that you made? Okay, so we paid marginally less than one times revenue, which is a fantastic deal. We're capitalised today, Open Orphan, uh, HVivo and large company. Uh, we've combined, we made it clear, we did about 30 million in revenues last year. So we're trading at about one times revenue. Our peer group, everybody else providing these profitable services traded two to three times revenue. So we think we're pretty heavily undervalued as we speak. Well, undervalued is uh, something which, uh, let's say, with a lot of private investors will be watching this. Um, you mentioned the word farmer and they, they, their sort of eyes glaze over or they start, you know, they get, they get a bit nervous. Uh, what are the risks that you're facing or the, all the rewards? Uh, yeah, look, pharma is discovery and that's toss a coin. We're in pharma services. We're providing profitable cost plus services. No difference from a lawyer provides or an accountant. So we're like almost a lawyer come accountant services to the pharmaceutical. So everything we provide, that 30 million should be profitable, no more losses. So private clients got frightened because of discovery. We're not doing discovery. No more drug discovery. This is a purely profitable pharmaceutical services company, providing services, cost plus. We're not providing legal service, we're not providing accounting service, but the service we're providing is helping pharmaceutical companies get their drugs approved, run the trials, and do preclinical. That's telling them how the drugs work. Right, so if you've got a client who's got a three-year contract, a pharma company, it's uh, developing a cure for the common cold, after two years um, it gives up or goes bust, doesn't make any difference to you? Absolutely. We run trials, we get paid 100% regardless of trial success, or a failure. That's why the big CROs trade in three, four times revenue. It basically can't lose. You get a pharma customer involved, they keep paying regardless whether the trial is a success or failure. Small, there's not a lot of small services company on AIM doing this. Your traditional AIM investor looks at pharma as being these high risk, high reward because they're doing discovery. We're not developing drugs, we're selling profitable services. Right, with HVivo and Venn, I'm spotting a pattern here, you know, you get a, a, so it's a dilapidated property, uh, you paint it, you put, you know, you refurbish it and everything else, uh, and then you created, uh, you created value. Um, so you've got two deals so far, are you just going to sort of stay pat and consolidate or are you going to be looking for other opportunities? I think I uh, might have got a bit of flack on some of the bulletin boards. I've made it clear last June this is not a lifetime. Uh, I'm obsessed about salaries because I'm the largest investor. I put two million of my own money into the company. As part of this round, I'm cornerstone it. But on the fixing up, uh, we've acquired HV of OSA at 10%, 13 million, all shares of invested capital. It was all spent the last seven years, so a bit like a dilapidated building. This, fortunately, is not dilapidated. It's only six, seven years old. We have Europe's only 24-bed quarantine clinic replacement cost. 20, 25 million. It's a beautiful clinic. Uh, it's in East London, Whitechapel. We have on-site Europe's one of the few virology laboratories. Uh, again, replacement costs, seven or eight million. And more important, to run these challenge studies, they're basically mini clinical trials for anyone to develop a vaccine. You have to have a stock of things called challenge study viral models. To make one of those, it takes about six years. You basically have to build a virus and you own it and you use it for the services as you're not selling the virus. It takes six years and it takes about five million. Guess what? 
in our investor presentation, we have eight. Nobody else in the world. The nearest competitor has one model. Uh, that's a Belgian company. It's about a 50 billion market cap. And there's one other model in the States. So HVIVO are the world leader in this small niche of challenge studies. And uh, we think we picked up 50 or 60 million of assets for about just over 10 million. Right, so the, you'll, you'll make that lean and mean. You've got the synergies probably presumably with, the, with the, the two businesses you have as well. So you're saving money there. And that will all go now into uh, driving sales. Absolutely. Look, we issued a Northern S yesterday morning. All this information that tells you the public domain, uh, particularly the pipeline of 100 million that HVIVO has, particularly that both companies are imminently profitable. We're valued as a loss-making company, one-time sales. When we, the market realizes a profitable, we'd imagine our current market cap is about 30. We are raising 5 million. When we get re-rated, we say, look, 30 million, that should be worth double, 60, and most of the three times it. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. Carl Friel, Executive Chairman of Open Orden, thank you very much indeed.